This is unit 6.1 types of bonding supplemental notes. You can go ahead and do these in your notebook or binder. This is going to lay the foundation for the 6.1 notes that I'm going to show you. Uh, I looked over these and I determined that uh, there's not enough information here. Okay, the information is unclear, so I need to do the foundational work first. So let's go ahead and do that. Types of notes, and go ahead and just write this. Unit 6.1, types of bonding, supplemental notes, so that you don't forget that it, uh, it enhances these notes here. Okay, 6.1. So basically, there's three types of bonding. Okay, there's three types of bonds. Three types. chemical bonds. Here they are. Ready? They're ionic. Covalent. And metallic. And metallic. Okay, ionic, covalent, metallic. Okay, those are the three types of bonds. So let's go ahead and look at each one, one by one, and uh, look at their characteristics, their defined characteristics. Go ahead and draw this. And we're going to look at lithium and fluorine Okay, in an ionic bond. Ionic bonds take place between a metal and a non-metal. That's their main characteristic. Okay. So that's the, one of the first characteristics. There's two, metal and a non-metal. And you'll notice now lithium, it's got one valence electron. The row below this, where this last valence, where this valence electron is, is full, right? Both of these seats are full. Fluorine has seven valence electron and it's got one empty seat. Well, guess what happens when you bring these two together? It almost is perfect because what will happen is, That electron will go right over there, won't it? You can see there's that empty seat. So it'll give away that electron. Okay? It'll give away that electron. And what we end up with then is this. That's what we end up with. Lithium has now lost an electron, so it's got a positive charge on it. And fluorine has gained an electron, so now fluorine's got a negative charge on it. And so what happens is these two things are bonded together. These two uh, elements are bonded together as a result of these charges. This, they're ions, they become ions, and they're bonded together in an ionic bond. So the other characteristic of an ionic bond is electron transfer. There's an electron transfer and where does it go? The electron is transferred from the metal to the non-metal. The electron is completely transferred over there. Okay, so that's an ionic bond. Next step is covalent bond, and go ahead and copy this. And if you'll notice in the covalent bond, you've got two nonmetals. Takes place between two nonmetals. It doesn't have to be two, it can be way more than two, like DNA is millions of molecules or millions of atoms, right? Okay, so in this case we've got non-metal hydrogen, non-metal fluorine. Again, look here. It's almost like a piece of a puzzle fitting together, isn't it? Because hydrogen has this extra electron, or hydrogen has one electron rather, and fluorine has an open space. Now, there's an also another open space here between hydrogen, actually. OK, 
okay so what will happen is this this electron will get shared over here it will get shared between hydrogen and fluorine and then uh, and then this actually satisfies both of these open seats here okay because what will happen is the electrons gonna bounce back and forth back and forth back and forth very very quickly mostly it's gonna be over here on fluorine but it's gonna they're gonna share this this bond and this bond will actually satisfy both of these empty spaces here pretty neat so here's what that would look like okay that's gonna go there like so and this bond now represents this bond now represents two electrons okay so two electrons so now this is this is full and there's also two electrons surrounding hydrogen as well mostly they're over here but they're also around hydrogen okay so when we draw this without the Bohr model it would just look like this H F okay H F and then we could draw we could draw just the valence electrons around fluorine okay HF that's what it would look like that satisfies and again this this dash right here counts as you count that as two electrons okay so hydrogen has two electrons around it and fluorine also has these two electrons around it now it's got one two three four five six seven eight so hydrogen, even though we didn't draw, we didn't need to draw the, the valence electrons here because the fact that this dash is connected to hydrogen means that these are hydrogen's valence electrons. And this dash counts as two valence electrons for fluorine. So two, four, six, eight. Okay, so that's a co covalent bond. It takes place between two nonmetals, and we can say that nonmetals share electrons. Oops, metals. And notice the name, co, co meaning shared, and then valent, sharing valence electrons. That's what a covalent bond means. Okay, so that's a covalent bond. Again, not all covalent bonds are equal, as we're going to find out later on. This is an unbalanced or an unequal bond. Mostly, fluorine is hogging the electrons from hydrogen, but nonetheless, uh, hydrogen also gets its share of electrons as well. Okay, and the last one is metallic. Metallic looks like this. Go ahead and draw it. This is supposed to be like a sheet of metal. Okay. And this is a copper metal. And notice, look, what it, what, look what's going on here there's positive copper charges and then kind of floating around these copper atoms is just this sort of sea of electrons sea of electrons there's not they're not in any really definitive or defined shape it's just all of these trillions and trillions of atoms with their electrons kind of just moving about freely inside this what we call a sea of electrons that concludes supplemental notes 6.1